Hey guys, what's going on? Luca here with my Mix Lab. Today I'm gonna challenge myself using only Studio DMI and acoustic audio plugins. I try to use only a few plugins and get the best result. Just follow me. I like to start my mix always from the stereo bus, and because I'm going to use only Studio DMI and acoustic audio plugins, I'm gonna start from space control first, diamond after and then lift to close. Now I'm not gonna touch lift to start, I'm gonna just create a little bit of space. So I'm starting from a stand mix, where essentially a lot of mixing decisions are actually printed on the stems. So it's a refinement, um, it's not a full mix. So you guys might be aware about the Studio my plugin. I just wanna take you guys through the process of me using space control on the stereo bus, what I'm looking to do without changing the nature of the mix. I'm not looking to reinvent the mix from the stereo bus, I'm looking to refinement. All right, so I'm starting with three band, and then on three band, I have individual level. I might start with linear phase to make sure there's no phase shifting, especially because I'm looking to do also some EQ move using space control. All right, let's play some music first. Very interesting, right? So you can add one band with a purpose or make the song wider on the top. But if you simply open the width, you're not really, you're gonna gain some side information. I wanna create some artificial side information and use the spread function. I usually say between two and five milliseconds and use the dry and wet to kind of control how much I wanna go into the sides. What spread is essentially, it's a simple, very small delay that it's happening between left and right. That small delay will give you a perceived, extreme wide feeling. And because fast transient, specifically high percussion, that is sensitive to placement on a stereo field, you can really tell. Sustained sound, piano, pads, you kind of forget <clears throat> that you are placing on the side versus the mid, but the fast transient, will tell you all the time where the transit is sitting. And usually I do two options as far as like widening the top. One is go very wide and do a touch of dry, a touch of wet from the dry, or go 100% and I go overly wet. So I'll give you two options. Let's start with the first, 100%. If I get little phases, it's not really phasy, it's, it's the crossover point when I put the delay. So I might move a slight up on down in this case. If I get wider, I feel get brighter. So I might use the second band to gain Little bit some level. Very impressive, I think. If I'm gaining level, I can always lower maybe FDB on the output. And now I'm going into the diamond. I love using the preamp. I can also use the preamp on the space control but the diamond has something special on the preamp. And I also like to use the 60 Hertz to get a little bit of bump of movement between kick and bass.
and then again, offset the output gain to match, okay? All right, great starting point. We start from the stereo bus. We try to stay close to the final destination from the real beginning of the mix, which is in this case, get wider on the top, get brighter, a little bit of saturation, and have a more movement on the kick and bass. Next step, if you follow the videos of my mix lab, you know I love to treat the drum bus after the stereo bus. Let's see what we can do with a little bit of transient in parallel and a little bit of clipping. So if you follow the plugin from top down, you have essentially a threshold per band. You can go compounder, which is an expounder and a compressor together, which is sitting in the middle. Or you can go compression, which is yellow, expansion red. And I like to do multiband. When I compress the top maybe, and expand your touch, the bottom and the mid range. And then at the bottom, you have the makeup gain per band. So usually I find the transition, the attack release time, and then again, it's a game of blending. I don't want to go straight multiband. I just want to blend, give some extra movement. Now, we are already pushing into clipping. The reason why I do that, I wanna hear multiband into clipping, and I wanna feel the, the lift is an extension, in this case of the transient, where they're working together. And I'm clipping in mid mode. What that means is I'm not clipping the side. I let the side go through without clipping. The side, we mean like we have reverbs, we might have like tail of the crash, tail of the cymbal, so we don't wanna clip those. We want to clip just the mid. I like mode 3, it's a little snappier. I like to use a filter, a low pass filter, a little bit of saturation on the drums and a touch of shelf. Adding is great. So if we do this test, it's going to be very impressive, right? So let's, let's bypass on and off just stereo bus and drums. Let's match the level and get an uh, actually a realistic idea, the affecting of the drum and the serial bus alone. All right, let's do it. So the movement of the hats, usually what I do, if I like what I hear, but I feel it's too much hi-hat, I simply lower my percussion a bit. I also wanna gain stage a little less. There you go. We got a movement between drum and, and stereo bus. Of course, we lost the scent. Some people wanna lift, which is easy. You just like take the scent, till the vocal, and just push maybe up two dB or two and a half dB. And let's see what we have on the bass. So I like to use Array for color. It's a compressor, but it has a really thick compression with harmonica, with the saturation. It's so well done that sometimes even using the array without compression, it give a give a nice bump on the on the bass. So let's bring the drums next to the bass. You hear like the way that the shape, the round shape of the bottom of the bass works with Array is crazy. And if you add a touch of saturation, now you have a perfect blend, I think. So let's see what we can get.
So I'm using two saturation. I'm using the density too, which it's like a, I say a medium fast attack and fast release. And then I have a level of expansion. So the movement of the bass. So tone is saturation from array, movement from diamond dynamic saturator. I think it's like the combo. Let's see by passing those two. Also feel that you're taking low level information on the base and you're bringing it up to the surface. It's very, very effective. So at this point, we're treating three single channel. That's it. And then we have the kick where we want to add a touch of top kick. And one trick that I love doing, especially with this plugin, it's use the saturation just to create transient. Check it out. I think I show you guys on another video, but essentially, if you are closing a crossover between 6K and 9K, now you're choosing where you want to place the saturation. And if you do an expansion mode, you're adding a top kick on top of the kick, if it makes sense. Check it out. And then if you want to feel that you are compensating the low end, you can use the shelf. So, you're tilting the kick with the top kick, and then you're bringing some low shelf to rebalance the kick. Bring some other percussion. Let's bring the bass. Love it. And again, use the crossover point. Make sure to work on linear phase mode. If you don't, you might have some phase shifting right before or right after to create some artificial. You want to stay clean, so do that. If you have enough CPU, uh, you might want to go for time over sampling. All right, so we got it. We want to do the final touch. There was an idea how to bring few plugins, four or five plugins, and reshape a mix really quick. The last one is one of the newest plugins that we have on the Studio My Family. This is a new version that you can actually rescale. Actually, you should do on this side. There we go. Amazing plugin. And this is like a, a vocal chain type of plugin, but it, it's so versatile you can use it on anything. Um, let's see here. This plugin alone needs a full tutorial. I think we did one, but I just want to show you a really quick application using EQ and resonant control together. Check the EQ style number three. So essentially you are cutting, you are de-essing, and then you are bumping shelf over 5K. Check it out. I recommend to stay in good or superb quality if you have enough CPU. You might want to do a parallel dry and wet, but if you stay clean, you just simply change the tonal balance and a touch of the essing, you might don't need it. So let's play one more time with or without. Let's see how we feel. Let's start before the drop. So after a while, you're going to get used to of the display. Display is so easy. It almost gives you like a perception of what you're going to get. So EQ wise, you can totally tell. Uh, also, it's a good way to do some ear training. So to understand how 10 or 15 dB works on your ears. All right, guys, Luca here, Studio DMI with my Mix Lab. Today was 
Studio DMI and Acoustica plugin only on your mix, just like five plugins. All right, see you next time.